And, and really, they were very much in listening mode at the moment because they were planning the stage um, and wanting to hear from other devolved nations. Um, next, we heard from uh, Dr. Jenny Elliott, who is um, the CEO at Arts Care in Northern Ireland. And this model's interesting because um, there's very much a central organisation in Northern Ireland that facilitates um, arts and health um, uh, activities um, and has partnerships <coughs> with all the health boards across Northern Ireland. Um, there's a big focus on participatory work, workshops, um, and the mission is to make arts activity available to all service users and staff in health and social care settings throughout Northern Ireland. Interestingly, they've got 19 uh, artists in residence that are sprinkled across the health boards. But they have a series of other project artists who, I suppose, extend the art form offer uh, across the piece and go in for shorter interventions. And then there's a, a team of clown doctors who work in hospitals with acutely ill children um, or, or who have life limiting illnesses. And uh, based on the belief that laughter is the best medicine, uh, the emphasis here is on play-based, fun um, activities, bringing some enjoyment and light relief uh, to challenging periods for young patients in hospitals. We then moved to Scotland, and Scotland had uh, three representatives. Uh, Jackie Sands started off, she's with uh, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, and her main interest was um, in well-being and the world's environment. Um, and she supports and advises the NHS in Scotland on the integration of art in, in hospitals, in health centres, commissioning artwork, and in therapeutic design. Uh, with her was Professor Carol Tannehill, who's the director of Glasgow Centre for Public Health. Uh, she really works to generate evidence to support action that can influence um, and improve population health in Glasgow and Scotland more broadly. And she had a student seconded to Scottish Government. So she shared with us a case study on the recent evaluation of the initial findings that have come out of Systema Scotland, which is very close to <coughs> music um, intervention that we may heard um, about, that was inspired by the Venezuelan model. Um, it's basically working with groups of children from a really young age using an orchestral model, the orchestra really being the children's family, and working in tar targeted in uh, communities where there are really deep-rooted problems um, and in deprived areas. Um, and the early findings are that um, this programme had potential to significantly enhance the participants' lives, health and well-being. Um, Part of the fact is being that they, they were encouraged by the role models to live healthier lives. Um, the artistic excellence of the practitioners, of the musicians, was felt to be absolutely central to, to that outcome. That it was a long-term intervention, not short-term, that was really important. And critically, the kind of quality of the relationship between the artist, the practitioner, and the young person. Um, it's interesting that uh, this quote um, struck me, people change lives, not services or programs. Mm -hmm. And it was the people, that relationship between the musician and the young person that was making a difference there. And also, um, uh, Carol raised the challenge currently in looking for longer term interventions and securing preventative spend at a time of uh, um, you know, economic challenge, really. Um, particularly when some of those impacts, I think someone mentioned earlier, might not materialise until uh, several years hence. Um, still in Scotland, Maggie Maxwell was there from Creative Scotland, um, um, and Arts and Health really sits within her Equalities Brief in Scotland. And Creative Scotland advocates for creativity on the basis that it has intrinsic value, it has social value, and economic value, and it's within the social value that Arts and Health sits. Um, and so that Wales was last up, um, and I spoke very briefly about the policy context in Wales, the Future Generations Bill, the emphasis on the healthier Wales there. I shared an overview of some of the key interest areas that we see developing across Wales on the ground. For example, a lot of interest in dementia and mental health work that we're picking up on. And our appetite at the Arts Council to seek a joint strategic approach to arts and health with Welsh Government moving forward. Bit more on that in a bit. And then um, 
ABN New in the form of Prue and Andrew Davis, their chair, did us proud providing very authoritative insights from their perspectives in the particular health board, uh, both from the board level, strategic level, uh, there was much talk about proven healthcare, about co-production as opposed to competition in other models, and uh, at practitioner level on the ground are some of the very exciting um, projects that are afoot. Um, there were a handful of questions uh, to end up, mainly around, I'd say, evaluation, research, um, how much evidence and research that would do we have that would convince the uh, medical profession of the impact of arts and health work. And I, felt, I think it's fair to say that all felt that there's more work to be done there, and that's been a recurring topic, I think, today. Um, there was also a question about how much um, arts and health work on the ground proactively reached out and engaged with BME, BME service users and patients. And again, I think we all agreed that more needed to be done there as well. But I think overall, we came away thinking that this was a really useful platform to be at. Um, those present were very much in listening mode, um, and they were really interested in what was going on here in Wales. And um, the next day I was contacted by a researcher at the Centre for Performance Science, which is a partnership between Royal College of Music and Imperial College, to ask whether in Wales the Arts Council would partner them um, in a three-year study to look at the impact of arts engagement on public health within the UK with partners in England, Northern Ireland and Scotland. So that was a great immediate um, thing to come out of it. And we'll keep you posted, uh, there's a, a funding bid that that's hinging on, it's called the Heart Study. Be posted on that. And another positive connection that was made was with um, Baroness Elidic Morgan, who actually was chairing the round table discussion. And as chair of as Live, Live Music Now Cymru, um, she's passionate about arts and health. And you may know that uh, she was recently elected as an AM for Middle West Wales and the regionals. And she did tell us that uh, were she to be elected, she would be very keen to set up a cross parliamentary group on arts and health in Wales. Um, so that picks up on what we were suggesting, John, and I think she could prove to be a really good ally for the sector in Wales in the future. So that's a kind of a really quick snapshot of, of, of that discussion that we were at at the House of Lords. And uh, I want to move on then to say a few words about the thinking around arts and health that's currently evolving, and I emphasise and under, underline evolving at the Arts Council of Wales at the moment. Um, a few of you obviously in the breakout sessions say, hey, what are you doing about this? You know, where are you after this? And it's a really good question. And I suppose the, the quick answer to that is we're poised ready to shift up a gear on this agenda. Um, and um, we, we're aware of a lot of the activity that's going on uh, on the ground. We are particularly keen to move forward in partnership with the sector and with government. And I think it's really important for us um, that we speak with one voice together uh, when we're wrapping on doors. I think that's going to be um, more powerful. Um, John mentioned the previous strategy that, um, that was developed, I think it was 2009, and there's an awful lot of work that predates me coming to this role, but looking back on that, there's an awful lot of great stuff in there that we wouldn't want to lose, and I think we are definitely in the mood to revisit that and to think about what we want to keep and how it should be updated. But I think at the same time, we don't think it's just to tinker with that strategy. I, I think we think we're in a different place now with the political agenda, and it will be a more re radical um, um, move forward and update, perhaps. Um, but it is fair to say and to, uh, that post that agenda, we, we got really close to that actually. And, I have to say thank you to everyone in this room because I'm sure a lot of you invested time and expertise in that. So we're not going to lose sight of that. But as I understand it, around the time the strategy went into abeyance, there was some key shift of staff in government level and it, 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 um, it, it didn't really move forward, if you like. Um, so since then, we've been working, in a sense, without a formal strategy. Um, but that hasn't stopped us from supporting arts and health work um, on the ground, which I hope you know. Um, it's just that really it's happened through lottery and through some of our uh, revenue funded clients, arts care being one of them particularly, raison d'etre is all around this area. 
But um, initiatives have sprung up organically. They've happened, in a sense, on an ad hoc basis, driven by strong individual applications and interests. And I think as a consequence, a really rich range of activity has taken root across Wales. And a lot of what people have showcased today, we recognise you know, as having happened. Uh, a whole range of participatory work in care, hospital, and community settings with staff and patients, public art commissions as part of hospital capital building uh, projects, artist residencies in hospitals and care settings, performances in healthcare settings, and professional performances on stage, work in um, primary care settings with GPs, arts on prescription, research and evaluation, arts therapy work professional work that takes health issues uh, as its subject uh, to perform. This whole range of work um, is happening and has been happening. And in a way, I suppose that demonstrates part of our challenge in this area, that the potential field of possible activity uh, within arts and health is huge. And um, I think looking ahead, we do probably want to get strike a balance between the response, this responsive approach, which we've taken up to now through lottery, to be able to respond quickly to really good ideas on the ground, but also then thinking much more strategically on a national basis about where we want to put our energy, about um, developing a coherent strategy, the pathfinder that John's talking about, um, with government that can provide focus and coherence and then we get a body of consistently organised evaluation. Um, that's what we're clear about at the Arts Council that we need uh, going forward. And um, a joint strategy with the Welsh Government uh, is our goal. So we feel poised at this critical juncture, I suppose. Um, we feel that a lot of the wider political um, strategies are lining up to add momentum uh, and advance the arts and health agenda. Um, it's also helped by the fact that arts and health is very clearly in our remit letter at the Arts Council of Wales, so it's very much on Council's agenda and within their thinking. Um, you may know as well that our art strategy, Inspire, um, is based around three key areas, make, reach and sustain. And arts and health feeds in uh, and cuts across all those, the making of work that's inspired by health, uh, Reach. This is really important to us. We, we don't want um, an arts ecology in Wales that is just for a small group of people. We, we need to reach much, much wider. And the arts and health agenda gives a really exciting opportunity here to get much, much wider uh, with patients, with health courts, with everyone, to get beyond the usual suspects. And third, sustain. Um, we've heard a lot about resilience on an individual level, on a community level. Um, and, and certainly arts and health plays into that too. So it's really written into our strategy. Um, the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act is obviously another key driver, and I won't go on too much about that because I know our next speaker will um, talk more. Uh, the Social Services and Wellbeing Act, another. Um, the focus on mental health and the investment in that, important. The wider tackling poverty agenda, um, key as well. Uh, this is a policy area that cross cuts arts and health because of the correlation between poverty and people's health. Um, and the Welsh Government's tackling poverty strategy includes a commitment to improve the health and education outcomes of children, young people, and families living in poverty. And arts organisations working in some of, some of our most deprived communities across Wales frequently report on the transformative effect of their work in areas such as this. Um, we've got real expertise that we need to hone here. Um, the other thing, really, um, since taking this agenda on over the last six months, and you'll, you'll gather I'm, I'm new to this and I'm learning, um, I have spent time um, mapping um, in an informal sense what we can see um, on the ground, intelligence gathering, uh, talking to you, um, seeing work, listening. And we, we've done a really small analysis of what we think is happening across our lottery spend as well and our revenue investment across Wales. And it's really interesting that even without the strategy, um, but it is, there's a very obvious appetite on the ground for this. More than half our revenue funding portfolio are advancing work across arts and health. 
and we need to build on that. There's also a, a, a very rich swathe of activity going on outside that revenue funded agenda through lottery that's taking work forward. Um, and I suppose because we are at this juncture, we've got a, a government about to form. You know, timing wise, it's a fantastic time to start this conversation. And John, I can assure you, there will be a knock on the door. It probably won't be me, it'll probably be us <coughs> and um, our chair. But um, that is absolutely the intention that as soon as the government is formed, they want to start that relationship with the health department and the minister uh, very, very quickly. Um, because this is, in the life of a parliament, this is where you've got the best chance of people wanting to say, yes, let's start something up. And I think we're kind of buoyed along a bit by um, the work that we've been doing on education recently. You may have heard about the Creative Learning Through the Arts Plan in Wales, where we did manage to have a conversation with the uh, education, with the defense, with the education department, but we have managed to infiltrate the system and uh, leave a match funding um, over five years. Um, so uh, that's a very significant program uh, over five years. Um, it involves um, DFES, it involves the Regional Education Consortium. So we think we have some, something of a, it would be very different in the health context, but we have a track record of being able to talk on, on and, and we do need to think about Wales wide in terms of what we might do, might be doing, as well as keep open a response spot through lottery for um, ideas that might not fit into a, a broader uh, strategy that has to make decisions about which we can go down. Um, so that's kind of our first priority to re-establish the connection with the health department to the health minister. Looks like it might be slightly delayed after what's happened uh, this week in the assembly. <coughs> um, we recognise that this won't be without its challenges. Um, we do feel the potential area of work is vast. We're going to have to make some choices together with you to gain focus. We feel we need to build capacity in this area of work. We need to tackle some of the cold spots. And we certainly need to start uh, growing the evidence base in Wales, as well as look outwards and draw on the extensive research and evidence that's been established in other areas of the UK and internationally to demonstrate the value of arts and health projects. Um, you know, we are aware that your work is, is resulting in a growing body of strong practice and it's fantastic to see the network um, and feel the energy around this at the moment. So I think we are poised at that point where we can take it to a new level um, and we do feel optimistic that some of these key government policies are aligning in our favour. Um, so I think I would just like to leave you with some thoughts around some things that we will be, you know, keeping very much at the heart of this. One is partnership, co-production. We don't have the answers to this. We need to work together, the sector and us, and the health sector, and academics and researchers, to all push in the right uh, direction. Um, and I think, for me as well, I think we need to work from the outside and the inside. Um, we, there's a really interesting mix of work when you look at work that's coming out of health boards where there are dedicated professionals and practitioners, artists, who are within the health sector, within the system, and affecting change um, under the skin of the system. And also a really rich uh, body of artists and therapists move out, uh, um, sorry, uh, artists outside the health boards who are taking forward all sorts of projects. And I think it's about doing both of those and quality assuring across the piece as we move forward. That's kind of what I wanted to share, but I'm happy to respond to any questions really. Thank you,